Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with Lynn Hardy, who is the line editor for the Rivers of London role-playing game and an associate editor for Call of Cthulhu. We talked about starting a new tabletop role-playing game. When you're faced with a big rule book, sometimes it can be intimidating to jump straight in and it's useful to have a couple of tips and tricks that you can use to figure out whether a game is going to be right for you and how to get it in play as quickly as possible. So Lynn shares her advice about that topic. I'll jump across to the interview in just a moment, but first, please remember to subscribe and thanks for watching. Well, I mean, the, the main thing is that it's so much more easy these days than it is back when I started years ago. I'm not going to say how many. Those of you who know, know. It was literally a case of finding a game store, looking at the notice board and seeing if there were any groups looking for players or, you know, basically having the nerve to go and stick up your own notice and the friendly local gaming stores notice board to, to appeal for players or being adopted as I was, luckily enough, by an existing group. So, I mean, these days, obviously, if, if there's a game that you're interested in, I suppose one of the first things to do is to go on YouTube, have a look, see if there are any videos about introducing you to playing the game or even an actual play, see if you can find an actual play of someone playing. Um, because then you're going to get a feel for what the game is how it works and, and really whether it's your thing because you know let's not forget games are expensive you're going to get an awful lot of use out of them if you click with that game so you know if it's the one that works for you you know the the pound per play is really tiny in the end but you you do kind of feel the need to, to sort of like research it and, and make sure that that first purchase which you know can be a scarily large outlay um, compared to certain things, you know, you, you kind of need to know that it's the right thing for you. And that, like I said, there are so many more tools these days for you to actually do that. And YouTube is a good start. You've given a lot of advice about the different approaches that you can take to address the problem. I suppose as just an introduction, there is kind of a problem. It is meant to be hard to a certain degree to approach a new no. TTRPG. No, I, I don't think it should be. Um, the problem is choice. There is so much choice. That's that's the major hurdle, really, is the choice. Um, and so you you do, because, you know, not every type of game is going to suit every player. So, yes, you do have to maybe do a little bit of groundwork first to find out the game that appeals to you. I mean, I started with Redbox D&D, largely because I was given it by the gaming group that I that had adopted me and because they wanted to play because I hadn't played it with for years. Now, I didn't feel that it really suited me. And I ended up adopting Talislanta. You know, Talislanta became my game and then I slowly moved on to other things. So it's finding that game that clicks with you and that allows you to tell the type of stories that you want to tell. But once you've got that game, no, it's not. It's not hard. I mean, it's, it's an investment of time because you've got to read it Um, you need to find players, which is always a tricky thing. But again, in this day and age with things like Discord, Facebook groups, you name it, there are huge numbers of platforms you can connect with other gamers and you can play online, which was an option you didn't have 30 years ago. You know, you don't actually all have to be in the same place to play these games. Just as a piece of advice for people who might be hearing this and going, I really want to get into it, but even though I'm hearing that it's a possibility, I'm not quite sure how to go about it. Say that I want to get into a group. I don't have people in the area around me who want to play at a physical table. What should I do? How do I get started? Social media. Look at, I mean, Facebook is, the, is a good example. I'm old. That's the one I know. Um, there are numerous groups set up on Facebook in particular, as far as I know, um, and things like Discord, which hates me, so I tend to avoid it, um, that, you know, are specify in particular games. And they will be able to give you advice, not just on finding like-minded players that you could play online with, but also help and support with any rules questions that you might have too. And they can be very, very useful resources in that respect. When you're jumping into a new game, how do you know if it's right for you? Because sometimes you can play a few sessions of something before you figure out that there's some mechanic or some story element that doesn't quite click. Is there like a list you go through in your head when you're starting something new or anything like that? When I'm sort of reading new games, it's like, 
does this appeal? Do I feel that I can tell stories in this world? Are the, do the mechanics make sense? Do the mechanics support the type of stories that I want to tell? If they don't, can I tweak them easily to make them tell the stories that I want to tell? Um, if not, do I already know a better system <laughs> that does? Uh, it's part of the thing of being a designer is that you tend to tinker with things anyway. So that, you know, I'm possibly not the best person to ask that. But the whole point is, is that at the end of the day, once you take those books home, they're yours and you make the game what you want it to be and you use it to tell the stories that you want to tell. No one is going to come around and knock on the door and go, you're not doing it right. You do it the way that works for you. And that's the joy of it. So on that note, would you advise that people improvise and change things from day one? There's not a first session where you should try and always play by the rules before you branch. You can just go wild with it. That depends on how confident you are. And different people will have different confidence levels the first time they run something. So if you feel really confident about tinkering and winging it from the beginning, go for it, you know, see how it works. It may be that you then decide, actually, no, maybe I need to dial it back a bit and go back and do the rules as they're written. If you're not feeling quite so confident, use those rules. If you're really still not sure about running something, see if you can actually be a player first. Have a look at your friendly local gaming store. Have a look at those um, social media groups. See if you can get in as a player to get a feel for that game first. Go to conventions if you've got any games days or conventions nearby where you can sign up and have a taster session. You're pretty experienced in the LARP world. What about people who want to get into a branch or a sub-genre of role-playing that might be a little opaque? The same rules generally apply? Um, I used to be really big in the rules. <laughs> it used to be big. I'm not big at all, um, <laughs> other than in width. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, my my LARPing experience is definitely from a traditional British viewpoint. Um, there's a whole load of different LARPing styles out there, Scandi LARP, you know, Nordic LARPing, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, But again, social media is a great way to engage. There are definitely um, LARPing groups on Facebook where they advertise events. Um, again, friendly local gaming stores will quite often have things on the wall saying that these are happening. Universities quite often have live role-playing societies. So if you're in a university town and they happily accept outside and uh, outsiders, you know, who aren't students, go and have a look, go and talk to them, um, get in touch with them. Um, you know, Durham University Treasure Trap, which is the one I met my husband at and that I used to be a member of, is still going. I think that's now the oldest one in the country or the second oldest one, which is, again, decades old now. Um, so, you know, these these things are out there. But again, you go to a convention. They'll quite often have what they call parlor LARPs or little free forms running at things so that, again, you can get an idea and just get a feel for it. But Techniques that you learn in LARPing easily cross over to the table and techniques that you use in the table will easily cross over to LARP and it all feeds in. And certainly it's been our experience that things that we've learnt while LARPing have been very useful to help us at the table in terms of storytelling, characterization, safety tools and things like that. Here's a little bit of a complicated question, one that we might leave on the cutting room floor because... <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, this is Chaosium talking. When you're jumping into a game, you're not necessarily sure if you want to spend the money to get the full investment yet. Do you have any advice for how you can get the best sense of a game without necessarily going and pirating a bunch of material? Well, yeah, definitely. Please don't pirate. Obviously, if you pirate, that means people like us don't get paid, um, which means we can't make games for you, which means they disappear. So, yeah, please don't pirate. Quite often, again, um, companies will have things they put out on free RPG day or they will have things running at games days where you can go and you can do your taster sessions. You can have a look. You can get maybe starter set versions of the rules. Call of Cthulhu is a case in point, and a lot of other games do this too, is that you have a smaller, condensed, simplified, streamlined set of rules uh, that are usually cheaper, um, that you can 
get there, they will introduce you to the game. Let's use Call of Cthulhu as an example, because it is a good one. So the starter box for Call of Cthulhu has a solo adventure. And that solo adventure introduces you gently to the rules. It takes you through the fundamentals, character creation, how the dice work, what success and failure looks like in the game. Um, and they're great because they, they're giving you a feel for the tone of the game whilst also teaching you stealthily. And then they, you know, the Call of Cthulhu starter set then gives you a second booklet, um, which is the streamlined version of the Cthulhu rules, which is enough for you to get going with. And then the third booklet is three scenarios that then increase in complexity um, to help teach you your GMing skills. And an awful lot of games and an awful lot of companies have gone that way because they've, you know, that the audience has changed in 40 years. The audience, I wouldn't necessarily say is more discerning, but they're used to more support. They're used to um, more user-friendly products than, you know, back in the 70s and 80s when this was all kicking off. And it was very much a case of, oh, well, we've got this. It's got most of what we need in it but we're really going to have to house rule a whole load of this because there's gaps of, you know where where all this important information is just not there <laughs> we tend to be a lot kinder to gamers now in terms of the support that we try to give them well let me throw out a, a question from sort of a picky gamer perspective and i'm using my, myself as an example here i remember when i first started expanding my ttrpg repertoire a little bit i was amazed by everything that i picked up and any game that i saw looked like it was the best thing i'd ever read and bit by bit, I don't know if I've become jaded or grumpy, or maybe I'm just getting old, but I'm <laughs> starting to find problems with everything that I read. Is that just a phase that will go away as well? Or what? how do you, how do you keep finding new games once you're starting to exhaust the standard amount? Have a look on various different platforms. Have a look for um, things like Humble Bundle. Um, I can't remember the name of the other one, but you know you've got platforms like Drive Through and Itchio and and things like that. That you know you have independent games, indie gamers are uh, releasing their products on there. Um, look for sales on these. Look for sort of like like you said the bundles where you know they're they're raising money for charity so you'll get a stupidly huge number of games for a very low entry cost so you can pick and choose and have a look through i'm not sure it's necessarily that you're jaded it's just your tastes have developed so you kind of know what it is you're looking for now even though you're not necessarily consciously aware of that's what you're doing and it may well be that you know you pick up a game and it might have been a couple of dollars in a bundle or in a sale and you look at it and you go well the whole thing doesn't work for me, but I really like this element and I'd like to introduce that into my games. And there's absolutely nothing wrong in that. There's no reason why you can't be a gaming magpie and take the bits that you really like from different places. It's what I was saying before about some of the things that I've learned when LARPing, I've transferred across the table and, and vice versa, because all of these things, no matter where they come from, will help enrich your experience at the gaming table and the types of stories that you tell. One last question then from a practical perspective. If you want to get into a new game, maybe you've been asked by your gaming group to explore something or you just feel like a change, do you have any advice on quick fire ways to get across a system? Do you have a skim reading pattern? Do you have a, a, a system that you use where you maybe go character creation into reading combat and then you're on your way. What's some just everyday tips that people might be able to implement? Oh, I'm terrible. I tend to start at the beginning and read the whole way through. Although creating a character is a great way to see if you can handle the game system because that's where you're, you're going to find whether it's going to allow you to create the kind of characters that you want to play and that your players are going to want to play if you're, if you're acting as the GM or keeper. Um, and if you if character creation is so complicated that you can't get your head around it, it's probably not the game for you. 